This is a place that is meant to be really stable and secure and warm and welcoming and available. We really seek to provide the space for people to come and get what they need. When I moved to New York City, I was in a relationship with my ex. He and his friends were my social circle, but then the relationship ended. I was completely alone. I didn't thought I would have to come here escaping, asking for asylum. The space, the autonomy to be able to express myself in terms of sexuality, gender, and New York had always seemed like a place where I could do that. People who will just like love you and accept you with open arms is just so important, especially with the society we live in. We've seen a rise in hate crimes just across the country. We've seen very disturbing rhetoric. There is an epidemic going on right now for trans women of color, specifically black trans women who are being murdered. I did 18 years in prison, started to reconcile my sexual identity how to deal with that, get past the denial part of it. I started drinking initially because I had just realized I was trans and I had a therapist who was actually practicing conversion therapy. So I thought I was going to die. I didn't think I was going to make it to 18. Being LGBTQ plus is still a crime in so many countries. They can take you from any place. They can take your home from your work, from the coffee shop, from the street. There are so many stories of people coming here who say, I can't go back to my country. It is illegal for me to exist. These are really life and death consequences that are facing our community. I still see the need that there still is in the community. Some people come here in crisis. You are on the front lines of all that. Thank you for calling the center. How may I help you? You're kind of everything at the front desk. You're down, of course. Yeah, right. You're a point person for staff, are an events person, you're a crisis counselor at times, you are basically LGBTQ311. Here, I want to be able to have a small part in connecting folks to resources. Es por el 18 y el 9, no para allá. I did a lot of research online, I visit different places, but the center was like the only place that I found what I need. When you come into the center, as if the people look at you as if they were ex expecting you, in spite of Hi. they don't know you. And I walked into the youth space, and that was probably one of the single friendliest moments of my life. Welcome, welcome! Everyone was so nice. Like everyone approached me afterwards. Hi, what's Are up? You surviving? I'm thriving. Wonderful. <laughs> I sort of felt like I was the center of attention. I was like, wow, there's this new person. I there are so cat many cat photos. photos. Oh, oh my God. God. He's so adorable. There are a couple of points where I would credit the youth center with saving my life. I realized I needed help, so I walked into the youth space and they connected me with, right next door, they have the center youth recovery program. And I started doing therapy, and then also I found a, a group in Spanish for LGBTQ plus immigrants, like me. And I feel this is the new homeland of the, the LGBT small republic. That's why I come here. I was determined not to go back into doing what I was doing. It was an opportunity to take my life in a whole different direction. Like stuff I learned at the center, like afraid to practice or do, I was able to come here and have a space and have the time to really start practicing that stuff. This place is re-entry, fortune people coming from prison. But then people coming from prison, some of them, are also of LGBTQ experience. So it's like an overlapping of these issues. The same people that want to keep us in that criminal box are the same people that's fighting against gay marriage, gays in the military, or anything LGBT, trans people in the military. It's the same people. To me, it's always important to be mindful of like identity and who is being centered, who's at the forefront of the conversation. People are looking for us to have that voice. People are looking at the center to lead that fight. Hi, Trevon. Nice to meet you. To Rise Out is the name of our advocacy initiative. Our push to advocacy is really just making sure that we are activating community. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. It's really about making sure that those in power see this as a priority. Whatever happens in New York will actually set the tone for the rest of the country, and it is our hope that we can have a domino effect. 
when we take a step forward, it's not usually all of us. There are people that are left behind, so we have to think of them and really put them at the center. I have a stake in this community, I have a say. We still have to stick together as a community until we achieve that for everybody. If we don't fight for it, nobody's going to fight for it for us. I am so happy when I can see someone expressing love. So I have hope, and also with the center, to overcome that challenging moment in my life. I'm super hopeful for our community. I think that there is more equity, like a lot more than there was in the past, but I think that we have so much more work to do. Ultimately, like the world that I want to see is a world that celebrates people for who they are. There's this wonderful life and energy that comes with a space where people can be free and people can also be safe, and those two things can coexist.